is that once they were on the ark, the Bible tells us this, that on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of heaven were opened. The rain fell 40 days and 40 nights. But it says the springs of the great deep burst forth, cracking the crust of the earth, moving it catastrophically all over the world, all at the same time, causing earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic activity on a global catastrophic scale that wrecked this world. And because of that event, we would expect to find billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. Guess what we find? Billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the earth. Tremendous confirmation of the Bible's historicity. And some would say, okay, well, that all makes sense. But then here's the thing. If, if the flood happened around 4,400 years ago and a lot of dinosaurs died during that time, then shouldn't we find some forensic evidence of dinosaurs living not that long ago? And indeed, we do. Oh, my goodness, do we? We could be here for hours or days on this subject. I'll give you a few quick examples. We are finding over and over again, we're finding soft tissue. And back up here, one. We're finding soft tissue from dinosaurs still intact in dinosaur bones. You say, what do you mean by soft? I mean, the tissue is still stretchy. It's still pliable. And many times in that tissue, there are blood vessels and red blood cells still intact which is astounding. For example, in this Triceratops bone, we see this same sort. We see this feature. We see it here in this duckbill dinosaur bone. We find this in this T-Rex bone. And we're finding this again and again and again. Now that we know to look for it, we're finding it all over the place. Soft tissue, blood vessels, amber blood cells still intact. And these organic remnants, they're made of mostly water, and they should not last more than hundreds of years after the creature's death. Maybe thousands of special conditions, like after a flood, but no way millions. Phenomenal confirmation of the biblical time scale. And we will look at that, and from a Christian perspective, we think, wow, okay, that's got to be a slam dunk, right? That's got to convince someone the evolutionary worldview is wrong and make them rethink their, their assumptions and their dates on these things. But it won't necessarily convince them, and here's why. Because as I said, as I said earlier, it's not a head issue. It's a heart issue. And then it becomes a worldview issue. And your worldview tells you how to interpret what you're looking at to make it fit your preconceived ideas. Let me give you a good example of what I'm talking about. I'll show you a little video clip of a brilliant, nice lady named Dr. Mary Schweitzer. She's the one who found this particular sample. But she's approaching it from an evolutionary perspective. And as she does, I want you to hear her conclusions. And as you hear these conclusions, just keep in mind the power of a worldview, the power of your starting assumptions. I'm not going to believe this. When she picked up a small piece to stop the reaction by putting it in water, it stretched. And it sproined and it moved all over the place. So we knew we had something pretty unusual. It appears to be soft tissue. When they look at neighboring parts of the bone, they're even more surprised. Out popped the blood vessels, and they were pretty incredible. And I said, I don't believe it. That's not possible. We need to do it again and again. It's one of those just goosebump-inducing scientific moments. That's all I can say. And I, they don't really happen very often. Blood vessels should not exist in fossilized bone. Many scientists believe organic molecules can't last more than 100,000 years. Yet Schweitzer's bone is 68 million years old. I think the presence of soft tissues and cells indicates there's a process going on that we didn't have a clue about. So I think it means that we have to kind of rethink the whole chemical process of making a bone turn into a fossil. Wait, rethink what? Don't rethink the age. You can't touch that. Notice what she is basically saying. There must be some chemical process that we have never, ever observed that is somehow making these things last for millions of years. 